So this is going to be going through the required practicals for the P4 topic. So we went through this um, in the last video, which was a summary of the theory behind it, but there are also two required practicals. Now the required practicals do use this kind of information. So if you haven't watched this video first, go back and watch the P4 theory video um, before you come back and watch this one about uh, the required practicals. So the first required practical for the P4 topic is on factors that affect resistance and there are two practicals um, you might have done them together uh, you may have done them separately the first one um, is basically looking at combinations of resistors okay and by combinations of resistors what we're talking about is series and parallel uh, circuits okay so a lot of the time what you will get is uh, an arrangement of resistors so two resistors in series um, and then an arrangement in parallel um, and you'll be asked about how you could find out the, the total resistance of the arrangement. So you would want it connecting to an ammeter and a power supply. Um, so the ammeter wants, wants to be within the circuit. And then you want to have um, a you would want a voltmeter across the um, both resistors in series so you could find the total potential difference if you wanted to find the total resistance um, and in a parallel circuit you would want it just across one of the branches because we know from last time that um, the rule for parallel is that the potential difference is the same in um, in each branch so for this our um, method would be to set up the circuits. Um, you would measure the potential difference and the current and then calculate R by doing V over I. Okay, so it's worth being able to write a method for each of these things. Um, you also want to make sure that you know how to connect resistor, uh, connect the ammeters and voltmeters as well. There have been questions fairly regularly about um, completing a diagram by showing where you would put in an ammeter or a voltmeter, so just make sure that you know where they go as well. Um, so the, the main um, one about factors that affect resistance um, is about the resistance of a wire. Uh, so we could also have that down here resistance of a wire and this is the one that they mostly um, ask you about in the sense of like it being a required practical where they want to know how you do it and what have you there are various factors you could look at when looking at the resistance of a wire you could investigate length you could investigate the material it is made out of and you could investigate the cross-sectional area of the wire as well, so using wires with a different diameter. So it's usually length that they ask you about, but not necessarily all the time. They could ask you about any of these things, but length is the main one that they ask you about. So again, this is where you would have um, some sort of power supply connected to an ammeter, connected to a wire. Now we draw it wiggly, but obviously you wouldn't want to use a wiggly bit of wire you would want to make sure that it was um, as straight as possible so that you knew your length was as accurate as possible and then you tend to have a lead which is attached to somewhere along the length of the wire and you would move this lead to change the length of wire that you're measuring across and then you would have a voltmeter across the length of wire that was being measured so you would change this point 
um, to change the length of the wire so that the, the current is going through whatever this kind of length is where, where it's connected at this end permanently and then at this end will be the changed bit and you would have a ruler here but you don't need to draw the ruler as part of your um, circuit diagram so again thinking of a quick method um, you would set up the circuit um, you would set the length to Let's pick a value, 0 0.1 meters, 10 centimeters. Um, so you would set the length to be 10 centimeters. Um, you would measure I and V. Um, and then you would increase the L by 0 0.1 meters. And then repeat for five different lengths okay um the i'm picking arbitrary things but we do know that we normally do things for repeat uh, we do five different values um and the reason that we do five different values is we could we so we can be more confident of the pattern that we've got um however uh, you could also talk about doing repeat, so repeating it three times and taking a mean, that would be um, useful. And then we would want to calculate R by doing V over I. And then we would want to plot uh, a graph of R against L. So. Another thing with required practicals, it's useful for you to know what you would expect the pattern to be. Um, so if we wanted L in metres and R in ohms, we would expect to get a graph showing direct proportionality. So it's useful, like I say, to know these, um, like the method and the expected result. Also things that you could do to improve um, this uh, practical. Something that's really important, because this, this um, uh, when you're use, using a wire, it's likely that it's going to heat up quite quickly. So you might, one of the, the suggestions that you can give as an improvement is um, to make sure that it was, um, that you're turning off in between values or that you're removing the, the lead. So you're breaking the circuit and then your wire isn't going to heat up because otherwise, obviously, if the temperature increases, then the resistance increases even more than it would do. And that would then affect your results because either you're going to get a curve upwards or your gradient is going to um, be increased. Okay, so they're factors that affect resistance um, required practicals. The other required practical that you need to know about that is to do with electricity is um, the IV characteristics. Um, and you need to know for three different um, components, a filament lamp, um, a resistor and a diode um, and we'll look at what these look like in a moment so I'll kind of go back and forth um, you you need to be able to draw the circuit for, for this um, so what you would do is have um, a power pack generally you have it connected to a variable resistor. You could have a power pack that you can vary, but most of the time we do it with a fixed power pack and a variable resistor. You then have, now it, you could have any of the components, so I'm just gonna write component because it could be any of them. Now it, it's likely that in your actual exam question, it will ask you about a specific one. So you would have an ammeter in series because that's measuring the I, the current. And then you would have a voltmeter in parallel with the component because that's the V measuring the potential difference. OK, so you do need to know the symbols for each of these components. So a filament lamp is a circle with a cross in it. A resistor is a rectangle. And then a diode is a triangle with a line at the kind of pointy bit of the triangle. So it's like an arrow, basically. Um, you can draw a circle around it as well if you want to. They accept either of those um, as symbols for a diode. So um, what would we do? Okay, so you would set up the circuits. You would um, 
starts at a low potential difference and you would record the potential difference and the current. Uh, you would increase using the variable resistor and record the new potential difference and current and then you would repeat I don't know three four five more times um, four more times um, and then you would reverse the connections uh, from the supply because that reverses the direction of the current and repeat in reverse direction and then you would plot I against V graphs okay so current against potential difference so this is what we would expect from each of them so you have Usually, because you're going to do it in the positive direction and in the negative direction, so this is I and V. Uh, so let me just okay. So you need to be able to sketch these for each um, component, and you need to be able to describe what's actually happening at each point. So let me just change pen colour so that it's really clear. So we'll start with the easiest one which is a resistor. A resistor, um, providing it's at a constant temperature, a resistor will follow Ohm's law, so it's an ohmic component and we know that Ohm's law from the theory that we did before, Ohm's law is that um, current and potential difference are directly proportional providing that um, temperature is constant. So if it's direct proportionality, we would expect it to be a straight line that goes through the origin. And with it being a resistor, we would expect it to be the same in each direction. So we would want to draw a straight line that goes through the origin. That is our resistor. Um, for a diode, or, um, for a diode in the reverse direction, um, no matter what we change the potential difference to the current remains zero because the diode only allows current to go in one direction um, and then in a positive direction so it's along the x-axis here and then it decreases very quickly um, as it goes onto the into the positive direction a filament lamp um, it goes through the origin uh, and it, but it curves once it um, once the potential difference increases in both directions. So you end up with a curve that looks like this. Um, you can remember this one because it kind of looks like an F a little bit, um, and that's for a filament lamp. So you need to be able to describe what's happening to the resistance at each of these points. Uh, for the resistor, um, the resistance is constant because the gradient is constant. Now, the gradient isn't actually the resistance because we're doing current against potential difference, current on the Y, potential difference on the X. The gradient is actually 1 over the resistance. But if it's a constant gradient, then it means it will be um, the same resistance. Um, so therefore, when the gradient increases, the resistance decreases. So that's something that we need to remember. So at this point, the gradient is increasing quite dramatically with the diode. So in the positive direction, the gradient increases uh, for small changes in a potential difference, which means that the resistance is decreasing um, a lot. Whereas in a filament lamp, as a potential difference increases, the gradient decreases, which means that the resistance increases. So you need to be able to describe uh, all of those things. You need to be able to link the graphs to the resistance. So remember, it's the opposite of what maybe your gut tells you, um, which would be that the so the gradient is not the resistance, it's one over the resistance. 